Let's talk about the Sentry dominant subject and your strategy for interviewing them in tip number 96. Welcome back again to 101 Tips for Interviewers and Interrogators. Here we are at interviewing tip number 96. I'm your host, Stan Walters. We're talking about the dominant behavior personality types and identifying them and in your interrogation strategy. Remember, these are not lock solid, uh, rigid, uh, immutable, no real boundaries. This is a fluid type, type of behavior type. All four of these types, we talked about the motion dominant in our last one. Um, talked about the background that had come from the work of Carl Jung and and in the commentaries of Young's work and through um, the DISC system. We're looking a little bit differently though. We're looking at people who are under stress or in conflict. So I'm giving you the kind of the dark side of how they behave and that's the best time to really pick up a, on a person's behavior type. When they're under stress, when they're dealing with conflict, their strength shows through and that's when you can get your best reading. There's a little bit of pieces of everybody in, in all of these, but you'll have a, a uh, you're kind of predisposed if you will to one side, okay? Now, the century dominant, and pretty much, and again, I've given them names that, that trigger um, ideas and connections in my head, and I hope it'll do the same thing for you. Think about it, somebody's century, it, it's pretty much what it sounds. They gotta see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, smell it, or if not, it just may not exist. So this person is, is more objective thinking. Nobody's perfectly objective, understand that. But what I mean is, this person sees things, they're drawn to it because of interest, they get to know it, they'll engage with it, but they've been incapable of walking off and leaving it and not feel like they've abandoned it or that it's abandoned them. Their interests are satisfied and they move to the next thing that catches their attention. And so, and they're very pragmatic in nature. They, they, if you mention something that's too gray, that, that frustrates them. They want some type of specifics. Critical key. This will come back to us when we talk about our interrogation strategy. This is the fastest thinking person you'll encounter. That does not mean smarter or they're more intelligent. That's not the meaning. They just think very, very quickly. May not always the best thinking, but they think ahead. If you want to know if you've got a century dominant friend or a person, and by the way, you'll find yourself in one of these four personality behavior types, and, you, you, and you'll know why some of the people drive you nuts and well, some people are plotting behind your back to kill you in your sleep, okay? And then other people see these things about you, but you don't see yourself, and you think they all act the same as you do, okay? Um, but the very, very fast thinkers, this, this is the person, and think of their friend that you might have, if the conversation gets very animated, they start finishing your senses or start giving you answers before you finish the question, and, and they're race off, that's most likely a century dominant subject. And they're also distracting to take off a two into an area and you go, where did that topic come from? And take off everywhere. Okay? But they need details. They got to have details. If you mention fingerprints, by golly, you better have a lab report there. If you mention you interviewed somebody, you might have to read just two or three pieces of the interview to remind them that, you know, let them know, yeah, I've seen it. And they're, they're gain pain motivator. Again, go back, look further back in our series here, all the way back through the whole series of, of 101 tips. Look for gain versus pain. What they feel is pain is when they're not in control or have, or, or have control taken away from them. Everybody likes a little bit of control, but they use it different ways. Central dominants are very aggressive at it. Uh, they try to control, control conversations. They control the group. Uh, they're very dynamic people. It's, it's hard to miss the sensory dominant. Okay? This is probably what I am. This is why I classify myself. I got pieces of the others. But I, I like to make things happen, stir things up. Okay? So and, and the, with your evidence on this guy, it needs to be in a tangible form. So you're almost laying it out on a table, piece by piece by piece, and they're going to go, damn. So you have to have it in that type of form. But their mind is jumping. Their, their brain is all over the place. The, the analogy I use, let's say that you got a scrimmage line, okay, in football, line of scrimmage. And we're on defense. We're trying to keep them from getting away with something. They'll try a, a student body right to see what happened. They didn't work. Then let's put all the receivers out here. Nobody in the backfield. Send everybody deep but catch a tight end coming across underneath. That doesn't work. How about a, um, a pitch option? Okay. Or how about uh, let's have second man through the hole. Or let's do a uh, uh, reverse or double reverse. Or let's do shotgun versus pit. They're just probing and their mind jumps like that. So you really got to work to keep them on task. 
And you constantly got to focus and bring them back into the issue, bring them back to the point. Um, they start things. They're very dynamic. They, they um, uh, like to create uh, action. Um, they also tend to be very blunt and straightforward. Don't ask a century dominant for their opinion, primarily because you're not going to have to, because you're going to get it whether you want it anyway or not. And if you expect them to shut up, you better act like you agree with the opinion because they're going to keep selling and pitching an opinion on you until you, you agree of in. So they're, they're relentless in that push. Very hard driving, very forceful people. Again, get a hold of the pocket guide. I have a picture of it here on one of these sides over here. Pocket Guide has this all spelled it. It is the, the uh, Cliff's Notes that you could use for all the body language, all the speech cues. They're designed that just for that. There is an exam in there, a little quiz that you can use to analyze your subject. Very short, no deep psychological test. And say, okay, I probably have a sensory dominant. This is my strategy, which would be this. Before you go in, figure out what you need. If you don't, you're going to lose them. They'll take off, and you're like in the little movie Up, the dog that, and the dogs that chase squirrels, squirrel, and their brain is gone, okay? So you have to constantly bring them back. If you don't think ahead of time the minimum you need to make your case, you'll forget everything. You walk out and go, oh, man, I, 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 why didn't I bring that part up, all right? Stand your ground. They're going to come after you. They're going to challenge you, not necessarily because you're wrong. They're challenging you for three reasons. Number one, do you really believe what you just said? Number two, have you got the guts to stand here and defend your point of view? And number three, <laughs> it's fun. They're just screwing with you. They want to see what they can make happen. They'll respect you if you stand your ground. Don't let it get personal. If you get into personal name calling, putting the person in their place, putting them down, talking down to them, telling them they're wrong or stupid or whatever, you will lose them and they're very hard to get back once you do that. This is not a battle of egos. You should be able to, to argue your point with this person, be very objective about it, walk across the street, go in the bar, and the two of you buy each other beers and slap each other in the back and tell war stories. You've got to separate that. So you're going to make everything where you present your problem. Remember our PASS. Go back and look at, use some PASS. Problem, agitation, solution, satisfaction. So demonstrate the problem in a pragmatic form. Just enough of a taste to let them know. Now, they will take chances. They tend to be very uh, brave in deception, and they'll take uh, risks. Uh, let them do that. You really got to hold your evidence on this one. You don't want to contaminate them. Let them take big risks and come back and go, wait a minute, here it is. -da. How about this big boy? And see what happens. Okay, that's how you set them up. You know you're gaining ground. You know you're gaining ground when you bring up a point and you've made a point and they'll say, what else you got? That means you won that point. Then you go to the next one and you do the same type of diligence. Don't, don't fight, don't scream or yell that, and they'll use aggression on you. Okay, they'll be very pushy. Don't let it get out of hand. Remember what happens with anger. Go back and look at reaction behaviors. Anger and two people angry, it's not gonna work. So present it as pragmatic before what agitates them is that it, you're not gonna let it go away. It's real, it's undeniable, it's substantiated, it's solid. The solution they look for is when they feel they're gonna be in control of the outcomes. That even though they may have to have a punishment or whatever, their mind is going on, get this behind me. This is a nuisance to them. They see themselves as overcoming it. They can do the time, they can handle the problem, they'll deal with it. So take a look at the pocket guide, and again, think of consensus bias. Everybody thinks we all are operating the same way. We all do this. Get in that subject's emotional type, get in their frame of mind, and slight, slight changes in your dialogue, in your persuasion tactics, you're going to be effective. Close is good enough on these. It's not have to be perfect, but you do need to connect with the subject. Speaking of connecting, hit with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, Twitter accounts, uh, I push a lot of information there through you. It's our online courses. That's our online programs that I'm developing. More along the way. I'm going to be developing more on these dominant personality types. Um, be sure to pass this along to other folks. Try to get information out, as many people as that I can. And be sure to be safe, because I want to see you back for tip number 97.